Okay, let's go ahead and practice solving quadratic equation word problems. And let's go ahead and take a look at the specific problem we're going to be working on in this video. So here it is. It says a rectangle is four times longer than its width. The area of this rectangle is 20 centimeters squared, and we want to find the length and width of the rectangle. Okay, so if you think you can uh, actually solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through the solution to this quadratic equation or problem step by step. But before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true passion to help as many students as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time in math. Please do not give up. There is absolute hope. But here's the deal, you need great math instruction, okay? So if you're confused by your, you know, whatever you're trying to learn in class right now, well, listen, don't feel so bad. Math is a technical subject, and, you know, there's a lot of formulas and variables, especially if you're studying algebra, so it can be confusing. So the way I like to teach math is to explain things in an easy-to-understand way so all students get what's going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test like the GED, SAT, or teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Every uh, person that's trying to learn math needs um, access to great math notes. Now, hopefully you're taking your own awesome notes. If you are not, you have to start improving your note taking, but you can use my notes in the meantime, if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the solution to this quadratic equation word problem. And of course, you know, uh, by the description of this problem, we're going to have to use a quadratic equation to find the solution to this problem. And I'll show you that uh, uh, those steps here in a second. But uh, again, what is the problem um, uh, looking for? Well, we're looking for the length and width of a rectangle. But before we continue, before I show you the answer real quick, what are the what's the first three steps of solving any algebra word problem or any problem uh, at that in mathematics. One, read the problem. Two, reread the problem. And then lastly, read the problem again and make sure you, <laughs> you're, uh, you know, really understand the question. So here we're trying to find the length and width of a rectangle, but we got to keep in mind that our area is using the units of measure uh, centimeters squared. So our length and width will be in centimeters. So don't forget to put that into your answer. But here is the answer right here. So the length of this rectangle would be four times the square root of five centimeters, and the width is the square root of five uh, in, uh, centimeters. Now, if you have decimal approximations for that, you can kind of see if you have the correct answer. But in, if you did get some decimals for this uh, particular problem, you would have gotten these answers first. So if you did this thing correctly, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know how to solve a quadratic equation or a problem. Nice job. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So of course, when you're solving any problem in mathematics, you gotta read the problem more than once. Uh, this is a common mistake for a lot of students. They'll just read the problem one time. They're like, okay, da, 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 da. I know what, uh, what the problem is telling me. And they just start, you know, doing things. Don't, you gotta settle your mind down, really absorb, um, all the information in the problem and really make sure you understand the question. So the first thing is we're dealing with a rectangle, right? So a rectangle is a four, it's a quadrilateral, right? A four sided polygon. But the basic thing you need to know about a rectangle is that the opposite sides are congruent. Okay. So in other words, this is the length here. It's the same on both sides. And this is the uh, width. And then here, we are talking about the area of a rectangle, a rectangle, so we're going to need to know the formula uh, for the area of a rectangle. And of course, we have a relationship between uh, how the length and the width. So a rectangle is four times longer than its width, 
and the area is 20 centimeters squared. So I say, okay, the area is 20 meters squared. We're dealing with the rectangle, so we're going to need to know that formula for the area of a rectangle as well. And of course, the, um, what we're looking to do is determine uh, the length and width. So once you kind of really fully absorb what's going on in the problem and kind of made a little uh, to-do list in your mind, you're like, okay, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need uh, the area um, a formula for the area of a rectangle. I know what a rectangle is, you know, and you kind of have a good sense of what's going on. The next thing you want to do is model this information. So let's go ahead and do this right now. So what's the best way to model this uh, particular problem? Well, just draw yourself a lovely little rectangle. So here's a rectangle. Now, this is where it could be confusing for a lot of students. So if the length is four times or four, you know, well, what does the problem say? So the length says it's four times longer the, uh, than its width. Okay, not four more, it's four times. Okay, so if this is, if our width is X, what is our length? Our length would be four times X. This is four times longer than the width. Okay, this is four more. If, if we had... Um, our width was x, and we wanted to write four more. We would write x plus four. Okay, that's four more than the width. Four more longer, but four times. So this is this is a point right here where students could get confused. So a rectangle is four times longer. Okay, in other words, if its side here was two, what would be its length? Well, it would be two uh, times four, or the length yes would be two times four, which would be eight. Okay, eight is four times longer than two. So you got to really understand these phrases, and that's what I'm talking about, really reading these uh, problems carefully. All right, so if you put X plus four, that's understandable because that would probably be a very common mistake. But basically, the situation here is our width we can uh, is some unknown value X, and our length would be four times that, which would be four X. All right, so that's uh, kind of the basic setup. Now, we also need to know the uh, formula for the area of a rectangle, and that's simply the length times the width. And we are also given that the area of this rectangle is 20 centimeters squared. All right, so what do we need to do now? Well, we need to construct an equation so we can solve uh, for these unknown value, uh, values, namely the variable x. So let's go ahead and uh, look at how we do that right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is use uh, this part of the problem, okay, the uh, information that was given in the problem, i.e. the area, to solve for x. So we're going to find the area of this rectangle. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to take the length and multiply it by the width. So that's going to be 4x times x. So we can write an equation just like this. So the area is equal to 4x times x or 4x squared. That is what the area is equal to. Okay, so here it's going to be equal to 4x squared, but we actually know the area. The area is 20 uh, centimeters uh, squared, so we can actually set up a lovely quadratic equation. So the area, 4x squared, is equal to 20 centimeters squared. We don't have to put in that centimeter squared right now. We could just simply uh, leave it just like this. And now what we need to do is solve this quadratic equation for x. Okay, so that's what we have to... Uh, you know, uh, basically be looking to get to is get to a point where, hey, I've got these variables, this variable X, I need to solve for that variable. How do we do that? Well, we need to set up an equation and then we need to know how to solve that equation. So this is the part where you need to know how to solve a quadratic equation. So the easiest thing to do here is to isolate this variable, uh, isolate this uh, X squared part of uh, the equation which is super easy. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by 4, and I have x squared is equal to 5. Now, that is a quadratic equation, and this is a big topic because there's all different sorts of quadratic equations and different forms forms of quadratic equations. This particular form is super easy to solve, so you need to know a lot about quadratic equations, and hopefully uh, you are able to uh, solve this, but we're not uh, quite done yet. So we have x squared is equal to 5. So how do we solve for x? Well, we just need to take the square root of both sides. So x is equal to positive negative 5, okay? So that means that uh, one solution is x is equal to positive square root of 5, and the other solution is x is equal to negative square root of 5. Remember, when you're dealing with quadratic equations, there is always two solutions, okay? Always, always, always. 
So here, if we have this equation, x squared is equal to 5, and now you just take the square root of both sides, you're like, oh, x is equal to the square root of 5. Well, that's just one number. Okay, You need two solutions. So x is equal to uh, positive square root of 5, or x is equal to negative square root of 5, or actually not um, both. x is equal to both positive and negative square root of 5. However, in this particular problem, we're dealing with the length and width of a rectangle, okay? So length or and width, i.e. Um, when we're measuring um, length, we're going to measure it in positive uh, values. So we could just throw out this negative answer. We'll keep the positive version right here. So we'll have x is equal to the square root of 5, positive square root of 5. So what does that mean? Well, let's just go back to our figure here. So our... Our width and our length is what? Well, x was the width, so our width is the square root of 5. But now let's go ahead and put in our units of measure, which would be centimeters, because our area was in centimeters squared, and our length is going to be 4 times the width, right? So that would be 4 times the square root of 5 centimeters. So this is our final answer. All right, so again, be very careful with those units of measure. That's a uh, part that a lot of students kind of forget. They're like, oh, I, that's not that important. That's very, very important. And a lot of student, a lot of teachers out there will dock you points if you don't uh, put in uh, your units of measure. So anytime you are looking at problems that deal with area, surface area, volume, distance, and stuff like that, you know, if you're dealing with you know feet, centimeters, millimeters, doesn't make a difference. Just know your final answer needs to have whatever respective unit of measure you are dealing with. Okay, so if you need more help with quadratic equations and quadratic equation word problems, I have tons of videos on my YouTube channel, but uh, probably my best advice to you is to check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. I go into this stuff super thoroughly. And uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.